Hello world! Today we're going to talk about how eating a leak a week can help you beat SARS-CoV-2. And we're going to start today with this paper, Manos Binding Lectin in Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus Infection. And at the bottom of this abstract you'll see MBL contributes to the first line host events against SARS coronavirus, and MBL deficiency is a susceptibility factor for acquisition of SARS. That second half, lots of big words, really complicated. What it basically means is low MBL means you're more likely to get sick with SARS coronavirus. And the reason why this is, is because mannose binding lectin is a key part of innate immunity, and it functions as an anti-antibody before your specific antibody response. What does anti mean in front of that? It means prior. So mannose binding lectin functions as an antibody before you have antibodies, okay? So first line host defense. Now MBL has a lot of different forms, right? Garlic has one, leek has another one. Now the question is which one works best? And for this we refer back to the, our previous video where we saw this paper. Plant lectins are potent inhibitors of coronaviruses by interfering with two targets in the viral replication cycle. And in our previous video, we covered uh, how antiviral activity of plant lectins against SARS and all mannose binding lectins, except for the one from garlic, had anti-coronavirus properties. But the most important part is the strongest anti-coronavirus activities are found amongst mannose binding lectins. And the most potent lectin against SARS coronavirus is the mannose binding lectin from leak. We also saw in our previous video uh, how the scientists have scanned the spike of SARS coronavirus from 2002 and SARS-CoV-2, SARS coronavirus 2 from 2019. We also saw last time in the video how MBL, the head of it, recognizes pathogens and this leak MBL binds to SARS-CoV spike at N330 and binds to the top of SARS-CoV-2 spike at N343. And we saw this because N330 and N343 are the same, right? They're conserved, which means retained unchanged. So we also see from the last video, N343 is conserved across not only SARS coronavirus and SARS-CoV-2, but also against all the new variants, right? Alpha, beta, and gamma are in this list where they found that N343 isn't changing at all, right? No mutants in N343. So the reason for that is because we saw N343 is needed by the SARS coronavirus to effectively infect us. So it can't change this part of the virus which also means that MBL is like an arrow aimed at the Achilles heel of this virus, right? The virus needs N343 to infect us and be uh, really strong at spreading, but it's also recognized by this MBL in our immune system. We also saw in the previous video how MBL activates the lectin pathway of our innate immune system and the antibodies, our adaptive immune system activates the classical pathway. When lectins recognize a pathogen, right, like MBL here, it activates this pathway, which results in opsonization. Opsonization is good because that is the immune process that eliminates pathogens. Now, vaccines train our body to make antibodies, which activate the classical pathway, right, antibodies here. This activates the classical pathway, which also results in opsonization. So vaccines and MBL can both activate our immune system against pathogens. And you can use both. It's not one or the other. And if you remember, MBL is an anti-antibody, which means it's taking effect and being that first line defender for you before your adaptive immune system produces antibodies to defend you from pathogens, which means this innate immune system here, this pathway here, takes effect before this pathway 
comes into the picture. This paper also had a nice little picture with an example where MBLs and antibodies are recognizing that pathogen. And when it does, a phagocytic cell, such as a macrophage, comes and eats it, right? So very literally, leak MBL will tag pathogens for our immune system to eat. So the question then becomes, how much leak should I eat? Spoiler alert, we put it in the title, a leak a week. And let's see how that comes around. If we go back to this paper, what we see is they measured MBL levels in SARS patients and healthy people. SARS patients had a much lower MBL level, 0.733 micrograms per milliliter, and healthy people had 1.369 micrograms per milliliter of MBL, right? So that represents healthy people up top, sick people below. And the difference is 0.636 micrograms per milliliter. We also happen to be able to find the average amount of blood in a person is five liters. So we can translate this to absolute numbers, right? 3,600 micrograms of MBL or 6,800 micrograms of MBL. Now this difference is the average adult MBL deficiency between control, the healthy group, and SARS patients, right? You can either measure it in absolute numbers, about 3,180 micrograms of MBL, or as a concentration, 0.636 micrograms of MBL. Now let's go back to our uh, plant lectins paper. We also see that they mentioned an EC50 of 0.45 micrograms per milliliter. What is EC50? It is the amount of a compound that you need to get 50% effect, right? So the concentration required for 50% effect for leak MBL, it's EC50, is 0.45 micrograms per milliliter. Now let's see about how much MBL is in a leak. There is this paper which did a study and they tested the leak leaf to see how much MBL is in it. Now, a little bit of a caveat. Uh, lectins are typically found in higher concentrations in seeds and storage tissues, not leaves. So this is kind of the worst place you would actually want to measure the leak MBL concentration. Um, and what they also say is that plants have a small amount of lectin um, that are expressed in response to stresses and attack. And in the absence of stress, these lectins are, are almost undetectable, right? Um, so when you're looking at a leak, right, the green leafy part is where you'd find low MBL concentrations, and the white bulb or stem part is where you find the high MBL concentrations. So when we see this measurement here at the leaf, this is actually a very low estimate of uh, how much MBL is in a leak. And if you looked at above, right above it at the garlic, you'll see that there's 200 times more MBL in the garlic bulb than in the leaf, right? So that kind of gives you an idea, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna run with this very low estimate of 0 0.01 grams per kilogram of MBL in leak. Um, we're gonna start with this low estimate to be on the safe side. Just keep in mind, you could get you know up to 200 times more in the bulb. A medium leak is about nine ounces. And if you convert that to kilograms, it's about a quarter kilogram. Do some math, 2,550 micrograms of MBL per medium leak. Now, feed that in to how much blood is in the person, and you can figure out that one leak provides roughly 0.51 micrograms of leak MBL per milliliter. This is pretty amazing because that's greater than the EC50 level. The in vitro EC50 level is only 0.45 micrograms. And one leak provides more than the 50% level um, in a test tube. So that's a great start, right? Let's map this back to the in vivo levels that we found earlier. So there's the in vitro EC50 level at 0.45 micrograms per milliliter. Um, one leak has about 2,550 micrograms of MBL for a medium leak using the low estimate. And what that tells us is you can get up to 
of the in vivo MBL difference from one medium leak. Now that's mind blowing, right? One leak, one medium leak gives you 80% of the difference in MBL from the sick group towards the healthy group. Now I wanna talk about half-life, not the video game. The half-life of a chemical in your body or a drug in your body or a compound in your body tells you how long it takes for this compound to break down and how long it stays in your body for. Now the half-life of MBL is somewhere between three to seven days, which means over the course of a week, if you ate leak on day zero, after seven days, you will have roughly 20 to 50% of the MBL left in your body. And if you ate another leak on day seven, you would add 100% to that. With our test tube, between three day and seven day half-life, you're gonna get at three days half-life, you'll have about six, 0.612 micrograms per milliliter or 3000 micrograms of MBL from the leak. If it lasts seven days in your body, you will have approximately 0 0.765 micrograms per milliliter or 3,800 micrograms. And at this point, we're off the charts. We're out of this test tube. But what's amazing is, is you can get up to this healthy level with a leak a week, right? And that is somewhere between 96 and 120% with just one leak a week. So let's summarize this. Eating one medium leak a week provides enough MBL equivalent to somewhere around 96 to 120% of the average MBL deficiency found between the sick SARS group and the healthy control group, right? All from eating a vegetable. And what this actually tells us is that there's a lot of truth in our old sayings, right? Uh, Hippocrates is very frequently credited with the saying, let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. And we always tell our kids to eat your vegetables. They're good for you. And we see why. It powers your immune system. And very literally, you are what you eat as you absorb these MBLs in your body to fight viruses. So, Take a leak, a leak a week, www.leakaweek.org slash recipes. And if you would like to help, email us at contact at leakaweek.org. Thank you.